Hey everybody, it's Joe from GreenLightSound.com, and today we're going to take a look at the new Studio One Professional version 6 from Presonus, talk about new features specifically for mixers or mixing, not so much of the production feature side of things, and talk about whether it's worth the upgrade if mixing is what you're primarily doing in the DAW. So because we're going to be mixing focus today, we're going to leave out some of the production-based features or creation-based features like the new templates, the lyric track, the video track, sphere collaboration features, the new vocoder plugin, things like that. But there are quite a few new features that are primarily focused for mixing, and I want to look at those today. So first of all, the interface got sort of a minor tweaking. It does look a little bit different, which is nice. I actually do like it. But you can also customize what's shown on the interface now. So if all this stuff that's up here, all these tools and features look too busy for you, we can go over into this edit customization in the view menu and then show or not show as many features as we want. So you can see in real time that top toolbar is more or less stuff, whatever we want to show. We can have the inspector which is the tab opened over here, show as little or as much as we want. Same thing goes for the transport and the browser over here. So really any of the different panels we have showing, we can show as little or as much information or tools as we need in here. And then of course, save it and use our own personalized setup, which is great. There are a couple of new mixing based plugins that came out with this version. First of all, we've got a dedicated de-esser. It used to be for PreSonus that you had to use the compressor plugin and use sort of sidechain within that with a preset to get the de-esser to work. But now we've got the dedicated de-esser itself. Here it is, really simple de-essing tool. We can solo the frequency we're looking for or listen to just that part of the vocal usually that's coming through. We can have narrow or wide band. We can go full range or gentle. If we go gentle, I think it caps it at 6 dB or so and then dial in the amount of reduction you want. So a nice, easy to use de plug plugin, which is great. Now this isn't so much a new plugin as it is an update to an existing one, but we finally get dynamic EQ in the stock EQ that comes with Studio One. For those people who are really trying to avoid third-party plugins and use all stock plugins, this is a great feature to have. We just click the dynamics tab here, and then we've got our threshold and range, so we can turn any of these EQ bands into compressors or expanders. So if I boost that up, I dial in whatever threshold I want, and I can dial in the range I need here. Another great feature that's added to Pro EQ3 is the solo for each band. So you can kind of hunt around and find the exact frequency and shape you want, and then once you have that dialed in, go back to the full range mode. Another new feature which we can access by right-clicking up here on a track is to load or save what is called a track preset. And a track preset stores all the track and channel parameters like track delay, time stretch, volume and pan, the inserts, the splitter, routing, sends, I.O., track names, colors, really everything associated with the track. Instead of building a template and importing song data, we can use these track presets instead to bring stuff in really quickly. Here's a big new feature in terms of automation and just usability. We have this feature called Fader Flip, and the way we get to it is by finding a channel with some sends on it. And I right click and I can select flip faders and I choose which send I want. So I'll choose guitar verb. And now the fader for this channel has not become the volume for the actual track itself, but the send level for whatever send I have up here selected. And if I move this up and down, you can see that little blue bar move with it. This is great for more traditional ways of dialing in send levels. Then I can flip the fader back by turning off fader flip. I also have a universal button right here. Click that and we get that fader flip turned on. We can choose whatever sends we want to dial in with the fader. For stereo channels, instead of just the traditional balance pan, we can double click here and choose between a couple other pan options. We have dual pan. We can kind of slide the left and right side independently and use as much or as little as we want and kind of slide both together like that. And also binaural pan. So not just stuck with regular balance pan, but dual and binaural pan as well. And that double click, which opens up the bigger pan menu here, that's also a new thing. We used to have to really just dial it in down here, which is kind of tiny and not as easy to do accurately. That's a feature people have been asking for for a long time, better panning options. The same thing goes for our sends here. If we double click on the sends, we open up a larger send small sideways fader here where we can dial in without having such small graphics on the screen. A lot easier to dial it in that way. We've also got this new mixer channel overview, which we can access a few different ways, but one is the button right down here in the bottom of the channel. When you click on that, it opens up this overview, which really has all the information we need. We've got our input controls here, 
all the fader controls for the channel, the panning, the input and output, notes if we've got them. This would be where your new track icons go if you use track icons. The inserts, the sends, the QMix stuff, it's all right here. And the cool thing is if we pin this to the interface and then scroll through the different channels we have, we can just leave this open and see all the information we need easily. It's great to just kind of move this over to the side and have everything we need all in one spot for whatever we're mixing. Over in the browser, we have a few different options. Now we can have custom folders where we can save plugin presets organized in our own folders and favorite them as well. So if I open up the Pro EQ here, and these are the presets for it, and I go to drums, and here's a bunch of the presets we have, we can click on it, and that would open the preset, but we could also right-click, we can favorite it, we can move it to a new folder, we can move it to an existing folder, we can do whatever we want organizing our presets that way. Here's a really big one for me. I'm going to create an FX channel here. In the past, the FX channels had no sends built in, so they became pretty much useless for me. I almost never used FX channels. I used bus channels instead to get the same job done, because if I was using a delay, for example, I sometimes want that delay to then go on to a reverb. I couldn't do that with traditional FX channels. They had no sends built in. Now we have sends built in. We can use it like we would a bus channel, much easier to use that way. We can now link the panning of bus, FX, and Q mixes to the channel panning instead of having to do it independently each time, which is great. So if I open up that larger menu here, this is a send coming off a guitar track. And I bring this drop down menu here, I can use lock pan to channel. So if the actual channel or track gets panned, the send gets panned with it. It's really nice to have that feature finally in Studio One. So Studio One stock plugins always had this micro view where I click on it and I can see sort of a, a micro visual of what's going on with the plugin. And now that's included for third party plugins as well. So if I click on the UAD API Vision channel strip, for example, I have different parameters used right here and I can edit what they are as well. If I click set up micro edit parameters, I can add or remove whatever parameters I want in this micro view. It's a really nice feature. And finally, this is not a really big one for me, but we can enable these channel icons. So if I have a guitar track right here, I can easily find it by putting like an electric guitar icon on it. I know Logic has had this for a while, and I know some people like that sort of visual indicator here. But for me, I almost would never use this simply because my color coding I'm so used to that I can just jump greens guitar, yellows are keys and synths, drums are this sort of brown tan color. So that makes it easy to find for me. But if you like those track icons, if you're a Logic user or you kind of like what that looks like, they're in there for you now as an option. And of course, if you don't want to use them, you can just turn them off and don't even have to deal with them. So that was a lot, but that does cover all the new mixing features in Studio One version 6. I really like a lot of these, especially the send features, the fader flip, and this mixer channel overview. It really makes for some really easy mixing and faster workflows, which is really important if you're on a deadline or you just like working fast, which a lot of us do. So the big question, of course, is, is it worth the upgrade? Upgrade to version 6 if you're on version 5. For me, these mixer features make it worth the upgrade for me. I know a lot of people think this should have been a point upgrade like 5.6 instead of version 6, but there were quite a few new features added, and the upgrade price from version 5 is not all that bad compared to some DAWs. So for me, it's worth the upgrade. If you don't like the new features, you could of course stick with whatever version you're on. It'll keep working for you. What really matters is what works for you and your workflow, not what somebody else tells you to do. So keep that in mind. So there it is, Studio One version 6, the new features for mixers. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already, so we can keep you in the loop as to what's coming up next, and I'll see you in the next one.